man who lives in Bedford Falls, New York. But George Bailey, more than anything, wanted to see the world, the exciting world that lay somewhere beyond his hometown. George had big dreams, but also big responsibilities, and sometimes the two don't exactly fit. Sometimes happiness is not over the rainbow, but right under your nose. Our story doesn't begin in Bedford Falls, however. In fact, it doesn't begin anywhere in the world. It begins here in heaven, where I, the superintendent of angels, am briefing an apprentice angel named Clarence. Clarence. Clarence! Oh. <laughs> I'm Clarence Oddbody. Angel, second class, reporting for duty, Your Honor. Oh, second class. You haven't earned your wings yet, have you? No, not yet. But I'm hoping this will do the trick. Are you really sending me down to Earth? I I've been to Earth since that time I... I yes, mm -hmm. we don't need to talk about that. <clears throat> there, there is a man in trouble down there, Clarence. Good. No, bad. At precisely 10.45 p.m. Earth time, a man named George Bailey will be thinking about ending his life. Oh, that is bad. Good, Clarence. Huh? I'm glad you understand. Oh. So you must stop him, if you can. <clears throat> now, let me brief you about George Bailey's case history. That's all right, Your Excellentness. I don't need to hear any case story. All I need is a plan. A plan? Well, you see, I'm reading this book. Tom Sawyer, Mark Twain. I'm familiar with the book. Well, Tom Sawyer always has a plan. I see. Always. Well, if you can help George Bailey with your plan, you'll, you'll get your wings. Say, how long have you been, been waiting for your wings? Over 200 years. 200 years? George Bailey's going to need a miracle. <laughs> yes, boss. Thanks for your confidence in me. I'll head down to Earth right away. Hold it, Clarence. Oh. Plan or no? First, some backstory. Now, when George was a boy, he and some of his friends snuck onto mean Mr. Potter's property and were skating across the frozen pond with a shovel. When Harry, George's younger brother, fell through the ice. Oh, and George jumped in and saved Harry. Yes, but as a result, he has a bad ear. Oh, he, didn't, he got an infection? Yes. Well, a couple months later, he was working at his after-school job at Gower's Drugstore. But on this particular day, Mr. Gower had just received a telegram informing him that his only son had just died of influenza. No Mr. Gower was trying to drown his sorrow in whiskey when suddenly... Drugs. What? Mrs. Blaine? Well, George should have delivered that prescription by now. Hmm. Wait, here he comes. I'll send him right over. Goodbye. George? Did you deliver that prescription? Well, uh, no, Mr. Gower, I, I... Why didn't you deliver that prescription? The little Blaine girl's sick. You lost it, didn't you? No, Mr. Gower, here it is. Here? Why you? Ow, Mr. Gower, my ear, my you ear. good for nothing, lazy loaf. <laughs> Ow, Mr. Gower, you're hurting my sore ear. What are you trying to do? Ruin me! No, Mr. Gower. You put something bad in the pills. Shut up, you little... Look, Mr. Gower. I know you're sad. You've been drinking, but you put something bad in the capsules. I didn't know what to do. Huh? The capsules? Look at them, Mr. Gower. You took the powder from this bottle. It's poison. Poison? Poison? Oh my gosh. Don't hurt my sore ear again, please. No, George. 
George, George. That's why I didn't deliver the medicine, Mr. Gower. I wanted to ask my pop to make sure, but he was busy. He couldn't. Oh, George, George. Please forgive me, George. I won't ever tell a soul, Mr. Gower. Hope to die. I promise. Oh, George, George. <laughs> Little Mary Hatch was at the soda fountain, and she saw it all. But like George, she too never told the soul. Poor George. He, he took such a beating, but he did the right thing. Yes. Well, George grew up, and he wanted to go to college, but there was not enough money. And so, George worked for four years at the Bailey Building and Loan Association. Building and Loan? Yeah, uh, George's father was in the building and loan business, he and George's Uncle Billy. But it was a case of high ideals and low bank account. Those two always do seem to go together. Yeah. Well, George worked there long enough to save up money to go to college. But first, he was going to summer in Europe. Full of wanderlust, he wanted to do some traveling before college. But then his last night in Bedford Falls, George went with his younger brother Harry to the Bedford Falls High School prom. So he went to a dance? Is that important, boss? Yes! It was at this dance where George fell into the swimming pool with Mary Hatch and the rest of the class of 1928. So you could say George Mary went overboard at the dance? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, later on, Clarence, <clears throat> he, was, he was walking her home, and they were feeling pretty good. As a matter of fact, wonderful. Buffalo gals won't come out tonight, come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals won't come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon. Not dog, eh, Mary? We sound beautiful, George. We don't look beautiful. You should have seen me scramble to get these dry clothes out of the locker room. I didn't know you were the football type. And I didn't know you were the royal road type. Didn't you now, sir? My train, sir? Uh, your caboose, my lady? You know what, Mary? I'd almost say you were the prettiest girl in town. Well, why don't you? Um. <laughs> well, what, what happened to you? How'd you get all grown up? I'm gaining on you, George. Maybe we'll be in the same class at college. Same class? How old are you anyway? Eighteen. Eighteen? Why, just last year, it seems like you were seventeen. What? Am I too young or too old? No, no. You, you, you're just right. Your age sort of fits you. You just, you just look a little older without your clothes on. What? I mean, without your dress. What do you mean, George? Well, uh, hey, look where we are. Ah, uh, the old Granville house. I, I gotta grab a rock, bust the window or something. Oh, no, George, even though it's deserted, it's, it's such a lovely old place. It's full of romance. Romance? <laughs> no, no, no. You see, with these old abandoned houses, you grab a rock, make a wish, and bust the window. But it's such a lovely old place. I want to live there someday. In there? I wouldn't live there if I were a ghost. And, now you watch this, that window on the second floor. Oh, wow. Such a bad shot. What do you wish for? Wish for? Mm. Well, well, not just one wish, Mary. You see, a whole hat full of them. I'm leaving this crummy little town. I'm going to go see the world. Italy, Greece, the Parthenon, the Colosseum, and, and that's only this summer. That's a good start. And then come back and go to college to see what they know, of course. Of course. And then I'm going to go on to build things, great things, like skyscrapers, hundreds of stories high, and bridges miles long, and, and, and airfields, and... Hey, what are you doing? Wow. You're going to put me to shame. What did you wish for, Mary? Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? Come on, Mary. What is it you want? 
You want the moon? Just say the word and I'll tie a lasso around it. All right, the moon, I'll take it. Then what? Then what? <laughs> well, then you swallow it and it dissolves and moonbeams come shooting out of your fingertips and the ends of your hair and... and... I'm talking too much, aren't I? Yes, kiss her already! <laughs> How's that? Say what? I said kiss her already, instead of talking her to death. Kiss her, huh? You just wasted on the wrong people. Hey, you come back here. I'll show you some kiss and that'll... <laughs> Mary? I was only kidding. Where, where did you go? I, I'm in the hydrangeas. Hydrangeas? Uh, toss me my robe, please, George. All right, of course, of course. Now, wait a minute. Oh, give me my robe. It's a very interesting situation. George! It's not every day a guy gets a chance like this. George Bailey! Especially in Bedford Falls. Uh, I'll tell your mother on you. Oh, but she lives so far up the road. George! Maybe I could sell some tickets, get a little more spending money for the trip. George! Uh, all right, I'll tell you what. I'll give it back to you. If only you just... George! Give me a... Oh, there you are. George, Uncle come Tony, on. Check it out. I'm going to give Mary a smooch it. George, come home, quick, it's your father. Father? He had a stroke, come on. Uh, Mary, I gotta go, I'll, I'm sorry. George's father died that night. And George didn't go to Europe. He didn't? No, but later on, that fall, just as he was getting ready to go to college, the directors of the building and loan had a meeting. A meeting? Yes, they needed to appoint a successor to Mr. Bailey. Enough discussion, gentlemen. All those in favor of approving these last loans made by our deceased president Say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Mr. Potter's dissent is noted, but the motion carries. The loans are approved. Some more lines. It's good. Thank you, George. That is all we need you for. I know you've got a train to catch. Right. Uh, Uncle Billy, is there any taxi down there? Yep. A taxi is waiting to take George to the train. And, of course, college. Hurry up now, George. Guess I better get going. Now I'd like the board to know that George here gave up his trip to Europe to oversee these things these past months. Thank you, George, and good luck at college. Thank you all. Good luck, George. Uh, so long, gentlemen. Now proceeding with our agenda, we must vote for a new No. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Potter over there. Mr. Potter. I've waited long enough. I want to get to my real purpose, the dissolution of this building and loan. Well, we've heard enough from you, Potter. What? I yeah. said I've waited long enough. Now, this institution isn't needed in this town. It competes with the bank and is a general nuisance to sound business practices. Therefore, do we need to That just is your it? opinion, Mr. Potter. It's not opinion. It is fact. Now that Peter Bailey is dead, I move that we dissolve the building and loan and turn its assets and liabilities over to a receiver. Now, you now wait a minute, Potter. No, you wait a minute. Peter Bailey was not a businessman. He was a man of high ideals, so-called. But ideals without common sense can ruin this town. Ruin? Of course. It isn't fair to the little people to encourage them to live beyond their means. Like this, Ernie Bishop, the taxi driver, I happen to know he was turned down for a home loan by the bank. Hey, but you hold here... on a minute, Mr. Potter. I handled Ernie Bishop's loan myself. You got the papers right in front of you. His income, his insurance, and his collateral. And I can personally vouch for his character. Ah, a friend of yours, George. You see, gentlemen, if you shoot pool with an employee here, you can borrow money. And what's that getting us? A discontented, lazy rabble instead of a thrifty working class. All because starry-eyed dreamers like Peter Bailey stir them up and put impossible ideas into their heads. Now who will second my motion to dissolve? Now Not you just me. wait a minute, all right? Oh, I meant no disrespect, George. Now hold your on, father. let me speak. 
Now, why my father ever started this penny ante building and loan, I will never know. But you know that rabble you're talking about does most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. So? Well, is it too much to work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms with a bath? Well, my father didn't think so. Because to him, they were human beings. But to you, a, a work frustrated old man, they're just cattle. In my book, Mr. Potter, my father died a richer man than you will ever be. I'm not interested in your book, George. I'm talking about the building and loan. No, you are not. You're talking about something you can't get your grubby hands on and it's galling you. That's what you're talking about. I've said too much. That's okay, George. Come on. That's quite enough, actually. Well, gentlemen, you're the board. You do what you want to do. But let me just say that this town, it needs this measly one-horse institution, if only to have a place where people can come and borrow a few dollars without crawling on their knees to Mr. Potter. Come on, Uncle Billy. We need to dissolve the building. Come on. You wouldn't believe it, you Stacy. Probably voting us out of business right now. Out of business? It was worth it, but I don't care, George. Because we're just worth it. It was worth it till you shut Big Potter's mouth. Yeah, who cares? I can get another job. I'm only 51. 56, too. <laughs> Well, George, you better get going. You already missed your boat trip to Europe. You don't want to miss college, too. Of course. Ernie's waiting downstairs. George! George! They just voted Potter down. Well, good. Well, be, we're still in business, then. But there's one condition. What's they that? appointed you to take your father's place. Well, George wanted to leave. Uncle Billy's your man. Sure, you can keep him on. You can hire anyone you like. Dr. Campbell... You need to get this straight. Don't you people realize I'm leaving for college? I'm leaving right now. George, you've got to take it. They'll vote with Potter otherwise. Potter? They said as much. Without you, he'll be able to dissolve, persuade them to dissolve the whole institution. Boss, don't tell me. George didn't make it to college, did he? No, he didn't. <laughs> George gave all of his college savings to his younger brother, Harry, and Harry went instead. Too bad. But, but what about that girl, the, the cute one in the hydrangeas? You, you know Mary. Well, George saw her every now and again, but Mary also went away to college, and George worked four more years at the building and loan, waiting and waiting for Harry to come back and take over. George still had big plans to see the world. He still wanted to travel. He wanted to work in the oil fields in Venezuela. But when Harry came back, he was not alone. There was a girl with him, his wife. <clears throat> George, is that you, dear? Uh, yeah, Mother, I was just out getting some air. So, how do you like your new sister-in-law? Ruth, uh, she's swell. Harry's got all the luck. She'll keep him on his toes for sure. Well, she'll keep him out of Bedford Falls at least. Now, now, Ruth's father has a good job for Harry, up in Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo. And that just, just means... Oh, then you can't... Yes, again. I'm sorry, George. Well, did you know Mary Hatch is back from college, too? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's been back three whole days. Nice girl, that Mary. Suppose so. Stop this moping, George Bailey. It's not like you. Well, what do you want me to do, Mother? Tell me one good reason why you shouldn't go see Mary right now. Well, Sam Wainwright, for one. Sam Wainwright? The hee-haw Sam Wainwright? Sam's crazy about Mary. But she's not crazy about him. Oh, no? Uh, how do you know this? Was it in the newspaper? Did I miss it? Mary's got her eye on you, George. She lights up like a firefly whenever she's around you. Firefly? You don't want her becoming an old maid, do you? Plat, Sam Wainwright is in New York. 
You know, so all is fair in love and war. Is that how it is? Don't be difficult, George. The right girl can help you find the answers. I see what you're getting at. Just trying to get rid of me, huh? Well, uh, I'm gonna head into town and find me a nice girl. Do some passionate necking. George! <laughs> oh, uh, good night, Mother. You need anything from the library? Library? George! George! You both be married, you hear? <laughs> I'm all right, Ernie. I wouldn't want to rob you of a fair. Sounds like the building and loan business. You want to swap? The deed? The deed to your house? Ernie, you've only been there for two years. I'll tell you what, can you just pay the interest? Well then, just keep your house. Forget the principal for a while. You're just going through a rough patch, that's all. Hear that, Ernie? Back at business already. Going somewhere, Georgie Porgy. Hey, Violet. <clears throat> Fellas. You look great. In this old thing? Why, I only wear this when I don't care how I look. Right, guys? Excuse me, fellas. I think I got a date. So, Georgie, what's going on? Where are you heading? To, to the library, I guess. Come on, Georgie. Don't you ever get tired of just reading about stuff? Well, you put it that way, yeah. Well, what are you doing tonight? Me? Not a thing. Well, uh, what do you say? We could make a night of it. Well, sure, George. What do we do? What do we do? Well, we could go out to the fields and take off our shoes and walk through the grass. The fields? Uh, or we could go to the falls. And you gotta see them in the moonlight. There's a beautiful green pool up there where we can go swimming too. The the falls, swim. And that, uh, uh, or we could climb climb Mount Bedford, uh, smell the pines, watch the sunrise, stay up there all night, be the talk of the town, a terrific scandal. What do you say? George Bailey, have you lost your mind? Walk through the fields in my bare feet? Why, it must be 10 miles up to the falls, and this is all I have to wear. Do you really expect me to swim in this? What's with you? For a guy who wanted to sail around the world, you don't seem to have been around the block. Just forget the whole thing, all right? Come on. Forget I even said it. Is that you, Mary? I think so, well. Well? Oh, me. Right. I was just passing by. Yes, several times. I was beginning to think you were picketing or haunting me. Now, why would I be... Your mother phoned saying that you were coming over. Oh, my mother. <laughs> well, I was just passing by. I didn't have any firm kind of plans or anything. So, are you coming in or aren't you? Well, if you insist, but only for a minute. I didn't tell anyone I was coming over. Right, you're your own man. <laughs> so, uh, when'd you get back? Tuesday. Where'd you get the dress? New York, do you like it? It's all right. <laughs> I just thought you would have taken up in New York, like Sam and the rest. Well, I worked there on a few vacations, but I don't know. I guess I got homesick. Homesick? For Bedford Falls? Well, it is home. And no you're standing on the porch. Come on in. And I really don't understand this. I didn't tell anyone I was coming over. So you're leaving? No, no, no. Wouldn't want to do that. Be rude. 
I'll stay for a minute and while I'm here. Uh, so it's nice about your brother and his new wife. Oh, Ruth, right. She's, she's, she's okay. Uh, you don't like her? Uh, no, no, she's a peach. Oh, so it's just marriage in general you're down on. No, it's not marriage in general. Uh, marriage is fine for some people, like Sam and uh, Harry and, and you. For Sam? Mary, who's down there? It's George Bailey, Mother. George Bailey? What's he want? I don't know. What do you want, George? <clears throat> uh, me nothing. I was just passing by. Coward. He's making violent love to me, Mother. What he, he is? You tell him to go right back home. Sam Wainwright said he'd call tonight from New York. I suppose so. Uh, how about some music, George? You know, your mother shouldn't, shouldn't be... Hold that. Uh, no, I, I didn't come over here just to, to... What did you come over here for, then? Well, I don't know. I was hoping you could tell me. You're the girl with all the answers. Oh, why don't you just go home? Maybe I will, huh? Mary, the telephone! She's I can't hear the Mary! Good night. Good night. Mary, the phone! You know, with all this yelling, you think that somebody could... Mary, it's could... Sam. Answer it. You'd think what, George? Mary, get the phone. All right already, Mother. Oh, turn off the phonograph, George. Be glad to a doggone crazy song anyways. Hello? Oh, Sam. Hey, Mary. So good to hear your voice. Is it? Seems to have forgotten my hat. Oh, Sam! How nice of you to call all the way from New York. Hee-haw! What, Mary? Oh, oh, yeah. Hee-haw. You know, an old friend of yours is here, George Bailey. What? Old Mossback George? In person? Yep, old Mossback George. Hee-haw. Well, put old George on. I want to say hi. Uh, George? Mary, yeah. Sam doesn't want to talk to George. He does, too. He even asked for him. What is it, Mary? Can can't you see I'm in a hurry? It's Sam Wainwright. He wants to talk to you. Sam. Uh, Sam, here's George. <clears throat> hey, Sam. He, uh... He, uh... Some pal you are. What are you doing there? Trying to steal my girl? Your girl? There ain't anyone trying to steal anyone's girl here. Mary, here's Sam again. No, wait a minute, George. Wait. I want to speak to the both of you. Put Mary on the extension upstairs. He wants to go on the extension upstairs. I can't. Mother's on the line. I am not. Uh, here, we can both hear. Just scoot a little closer. Closer? <clears throat> All right. There. All right, Sam, we're both on the line. Good. Now, I have a plan that's going to make us all rich. George, remember one time in Martini's Tavern? You told me about making plastics out of, uh, chili beans? Chili beans? Soybeans. I mean soybeans. Soy, <clears throat> soybeans, right, right. Well, my father's investing in it, George. We're going to open a factory outside Rochester. What do you think of that? A factory? Rochester? Why don't you just do it out here? The old, the old tool machinery business is closed down. Uh, you, could get, you could get that building for a song. And besides, there's lots of labor out here, too. Now you're talking, George. But here's the point. Mary, you listen to this too. If you've got any stock, put every dime into our stock. Stock? Come on, George. We might even have a job for you. That is, if you're still not married to that broken down old building and loan, here's your chance to get in on the ground floor. Ground floor? That's wonderful. We'll have to see about that, Sam. Oh, Mary, are you still listening? Yes, Sam, I'm still here. Tell George this is the chance of a lifetime, you hear? The chance of a lifetime. Uh, he, he says it's a chance of a lifetime. Oh, you give me that phone. Now you listen to me. I don't want any jobs and I don't want any plastics. I don't want any ground floors and I don't want to get married ever to anyone. Do you understand me? George. I want to do what I want to do. You can't trick me in any, any kind of... George. Mary. I know. 
Mary got hitched. Well, they did. They were married that October. And then the two rode off together in Ernie Bishop's taxi cab for their honeymoon. Oh. You see this fat wad of cash, Mary? Count it. It's our kitty. No. So we're shooting the works, aren't you? A week in New York, a week in Bermuda. It'll be the highest hotels, the, the richest caviar, the hottest music, and the prettiest wife. Congratulations, George. And you're finally getting out of Bedford Falls. Then what? Yeah. Gee, I, I don't know. Then what, dear? The moon, who cares? That's right. You know what, Mrs. Bailey? I haven't kissed you nearly enough. Get over here, you. <laughs> hey, George, here's Genesee Street. Can you fond farewell? Right. So long, Bedford Falls. Uh, old building and loan. Uh, Mr. Potter, we're leaving this town and we ain't ever coming back, ever. That sounds about right. Look over there. There's something happening in front of the bank. Pull over, Ernie. What is it? That's what you call a bank run. A bank run? Yeah. If you've got any money in the bank, you better get it out. Oh, no, George, don't go. Ernie, go straight to the... Mary, i got to see what's happening. Oh, George, no, I'll be back please. in a minute. Ernie, stop him. Goodness, boss. I've heard enough background story. If George Bailey's down there contemplating suicide, I better head to Earth right away. Oh, oh. Hold it, Clarence. Oh. Rummager. If you are ever going to get your wings, you need to have a little bit of patience. <sighs> now, where were we? George and Mary were on their way out of town when they ran into a bank run. Ah, yes. It was the financial panic of 1932. You see, bank troubles were very prevalent then. Whoa. What's going on, boss? In the lobby of the building and loan, dozens of worried shareholders are clamoring for their savings. But meanwhile, Uncle Billy is in George's office. Uh, George, where are you? Hey, Uncle Billy, there's a line of people outside the bank and a bunch of angry people in our lobby. What's happening? It's, it's a panic, George. They all want to withdraw their shares. They want their money. Now we're in a pickle. The bank owes it our loan this morning. A loan? Well, they've got to run, and they need cash. They demand we pay off our loan immediately. I handed over all of the cash. I had to. All of the cash? Uncle Billy, do you know what that means? Well, the whole town's gone nuts, George. Now we're in the same pickle as the bank system. Who would have thought you couldn't trust the American bank system of all? Hello, this is Billy. This is Henry Potter. Let me speak to George. George, it's Henry Potter. Or me. George Bailey here. George, are you okay? Have you called the police to quell that unruly crowd in your lobby? The police? <laughs> now, I just want you to know that in this financial crisis, I'm here to help. Help? Yes, I've just guaranteed sufficient funds to the bank. They'll close down for a week's bank holiday, then reopen. Mr. Potter just took over the bank. I see, then you'll reopen under new management, of course. Of course. Now, this may cost me a fortune, but I'm willing to help out your shareholders, too. If they need cash, they can sell their shares to me. I'm paying 50 cents on the dollar. Oh, no, they won't. 
There'll be no fire cells here. And besides, we don't need your bailout anyways. You don't have any money and you know it. And that means bankruptcy. And your working people will lose everything. Am I wrong? I know your charter, George. If you close your doors before 6 p.m., you'll never reopen. You really don't miss a trick, do you, Potter? Well, here's one you will. Well, I guess you told him, huh, George? But he's right. Our charter says we gotta stay open until 6 p.m. Otherwise, the state just takes our license away, just like that. Stay open till 6? Well, if that ain't money, I'll take a miracle. Well, let's go see what we can do. Well, I talked to Mr. Potter on the phone. He said the bank will reopen next week. Next week? Now, just listen to me. You guys, you got it all wrong. Now, your money's not here. Where, where would it be? Where would it be? Now, just, just let me explain this. Your money's not here. It's not in the safe. No, the money you've invested in the building and loan is put into people's houses. It, it's in Ernie's house, Grimaldi's house, your house, and a hundred other houses. That's how the Bailey Building Alone works. If you all want your money, what do you want us to do? Close on them and throw them out of their homes? Yeah! yeah. 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 I got $242 in shares here. $242 won't break you. Close my account. I want my money now. Yeah! yeah. I want my money too. Well, well, then just sign this form and you get your money back in 60 days. What? 60 days? What? Well, that's what you all agreed to when you bought your shares. What? Oh, what we Brittany, work. Yeah. All the world will pay you 50 cents if you go for all your shares. Now we want to do Well, now we just got to stick to the agreement. Oh, yeah? Come on, everybody. Let's take our shares to fire. Oh, come, on come, on now, come on now. Come on now. Hold on now. Hold on. Wait, just stop, stop now. Just, just listen to me. If Mr. Potter gets a hold of the building and loan, there won't be a decent house built in this town ever again. Don't you see that? He's already got the bank, the bus line, and the department store, and now he's after us. You know why? Why? Because he wants to keep y'all living in his shacks, paying the rent that he decides. But George! Betsy, last year times were tough for you. You couldn't always pay. Do you think that Mr. Potter would have let you keep your house? Well... Well, come on now, people. Potter's buying because you're panicking and he's not. You see, to him, you're all just a bunch of bargains. Now, we can get through this. We just gotta stick together, believe in one another, have faith. Come on. Yeah. yeah, my husband got laid while at work. I, I need our money. Yeah, what do we live on until the bank reopens? Yeah. What are we gonna do? You can't feed your kids on faith, George. Yeah. 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 George, George, darling, how much do they need? Mary, we've still got some money. We do. We do. Hey, I got two thousand dollars here. I'm my own money. Uh, who's up first? Charlotte, get on up here. How much do you need? Two hundred and forty-two dollars. Come on, Charlotte. How much? How much do you need? I'll take $242. Uncle Billy, $242. That closes my account then. That does not close your account. It's just a loan, Charlotte, just a loan. All right, who's up? Me? Betsy, Betsy, Betsy. Now how much you need? Well, I have $300 in here. Come on, Betsy, just enough to tide you over. Well, um, $20 then. Oh, $20? Thank you, Betsy, you have a wonderful day now. Uh, Mrs. Davis. Oh, this is your own money, George. I know this, I know this. Now, how much do you need? Well, would $17.40 be too much? $17.40? Oh, bless your heart, dear. Now, you pay that back when you can, all right? When you can. All right, single file line. Let's go, let's go. Single file. Stacy, lock that door. Okay, George. We made it, even if we only got two bucks left. Hey, maybe they'll breed in the safe like bunnies. They better. All right. George, telephone. Oh, right. Tilly, could you call my wife? I seem to have forgotten to Mrs. call her. Mrs. Bailey's on the line. Mrs. Bailey? I don't want to talk to Mrs. Bailey. I want to talk to my wife, Mrs. Bailey. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Hello, is this Mrs. Bailey? Yes, this is Mrs. Bailey. <laughs> Mary, we survived it. I'm sorry I forgot to call you or anything. Now that you're done saving things, come home. What? Come home. Come home? Well, what home? Our home, George, at 320 Sycamore. 320 Sycamore? Whose home is that? Our home. Our home? What? Our home, Saphead. Right. Uh, what are you talking about? Right now. All right. Uh, I'll be there in a minute. Uh, I love you. I love you too, darling. Goodbye. Do you know where 320 Sycamore is? Is mother in law's house? No. It's the old Granville place where George and Mary threw rocks and made wishes. You see, it was Mary's wish to marry George and live in that house. Uh -huh. And that's where they honeymooned, that's where they set up house, and that's where they were still living two years later when Mr. Potter called George into his office. Now, George, I suppose you're wondering why you're here. Why not? Well, I, I have no idea, Mr. Potter, but, but I'm sure you do. That's what I admire about you, George. You're like me. You get right to the point. Okay, well, George, I'm giving up. Giving up? Yes, as you know, I run nearly everything in this town. Everything except the Bailey Building and Loan, of course. For years, I've tried to get control of it. But you've outwitted me, evaded me, and defeated me. Am I right? Well, actually, yes. That's because you're a smart man, George. Two years ago, during the bank panic, you and I were the only ones that kept our heads. You saved the building alone, and I saved everything else. <clears throat> well, most would say you stole everything else, Mr. Potter. Envious people might say that, George. The suckers might say that, but we both know that I was just being a smart businessman, and that's what I'm being right now. <laughs> well, you're giving up. Well, if you can't beat them, join them. Hey, 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 now if you're suggesting Wait, that... George, don't get up. Don't leave. Take it easy now. You've heard my side of the story. Well, let's look at your side. My side? You're a young man. 27, 28, married, making what, $40 a week? 45. Okay, 45. And if you were a common, ordinary yokel, I'd say you were doing well. However, you're no common, ordinary yokel, George. You're an intelligent, resourceful, ambitious young man who hates his job. Yes. You hate the building alone almost as much as I do, George. You've been dying to get out of this town ever since you were born. You see your friends and your brother, they go places. While you're trapped here, frittering your life away, playing nursemaid to a bunch of garlic eaters. Is this a correct picture, George, or do I exaggerate? Well, well what's your point, Mr. Potter? My point is that I want to hire you, George. Hire me? For what? To manage my affairs. Oversee my properties, and I can start you off at $20,000 a year. Did you say $20,000 a year? Of course, and you're worth it too. Wouldn't you like to live in the best house in town? Get your wife some fine clothes? A trip to Europe every year? Okay, we're in the city. Let's go to Sapporo. It's been on 
Occupies <clears throat> Europe. Hey, you sure you're talking to the right guy? I'm George Bailey. The building alone, George Bailey. Yes, the George Bailey whose ship has just come in. Providing he has the brains to climb aboard. Well, well yeah. But what about the building and loan? Forget the building and loan, George Bailey. I'm offering you a two-year contract at $20,000 a year. Do we have a deal or not? I don't know. Could you give me 24 hours to think about it? Ask the wife. Of course, George. Meanwhile, I'll drop the papers. Let's shake on it, my boy. Right, right. Never thought that me and Mr. Potter would... Is there something wrong, George? We're just shaking hands over a business deal. I can't do this. I don't need 24 hours to think about it. I know the answer right now, and the answer is no. What? That's right, you couldn't offer me a million dollars to stay in Bedford Falls and be your stooge. I would, I would still say no. But why? Because the whole world shouldn't revolve around you and your money. You need to realize that some things, they, they can't be bought or, or bought off and me, I'm one of them. I don't need your money. Now, let me out of here. You'll eat those words, George Bailey. You're a failure, just like your father. You just don't know it yet. Sorry, I'm late, man. She's getting some air. You bored waiting up for me? Just knitting, George. So what did Mr. Potter want to see you about? Uh, just to talk. Why did you marry a guy like me anyways? Well, I didn't want to be an old maid. <laughs> I was uh, going to go see the world. Do things, build things. It's gonna give you the moon. But instead, what have I given you? My fancy clothes, a nice home, no trip to Europe. Some kind of husband I am. I feel terrible. Me too, mornings especially. I mean, you, you could have went on to marry somebody more successful, like Sam or, or even anybody else. Well, I didn't want to marry anybody else. I wanted my baby to look like you. I mean, you didn't even get a honeymoon. Wait, you want what to look like me? My baby. Baby? <laughs> Mary, are you trying to tell me, are you trying to tell me you're on the nest? The God? <laughs> Well, Clarence, Mary had her baby, a little boy named Petey. Uh, and then she had another baby, a girl named Janie. Good for them. But George never got out of Bedford Falls. He didn't? No. Year after year, George slaved away at the building and loan. Potter made things quite tough for him. But George kept on wishing and dreaming. And Mary had another baby, Susan, who they nicknamed Zuzu. That's just charming. Well, then, then came the war. Mary ran the USO and had another baby, Tommy. Old Mr. Gower and Uncle Billy sold war bonds, and Mr. Potter ran the draft board, of course. Violet joined the waves until they discovered that her way of raising morale would sink the Navy. Oh. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Bert the cop got wounded in Tunisia, and he received a silver star. And Ernie the cab driver, he was captured by Nazis, and he escaped from a prison camp. And Harry, you remember George's brother Harry? Uh, yeah, he moved to Buffalo, right? He did, and Harry became a real hero. As a Navy flyer, he shot down 15 enemy planes, two of them just as they were about to crash into a transport full of soldiers. Wow, good for Harry. What about George? What George during the war? Well, George fought the Battle of Bedford Falls. He was designated 4F due to his bad ear, and so he served as an air raid warden. He ran scrap drives, rubber drives, plastic drives, you name it. Like the rest of the country, on VE Day, he prayed and wept. And on VJ Day, he prayed and wept again. That brings us up to the day, doesn't it, boss? 
Yes, Clarence. In fact, the only thing you don't know is what has happened that has him down there at this moment wanting to die. What? What is it? <laughs> Today is the day before Christmas. And in addition to the usual holiday preparations, George is very excited. Hey, Tilly, Stacy, did you see in the newspaper? Right here. Uh, Commander Harry Bailey, famous Navy ace, decorated by the president. Can you believe it? My brother, the Medal of Honor. Gosh, George, that's just swell. Right here. Yeah. Commander Bailey downed 15 enemy airplanes, the last a kamikaze, just as it was about to dive into a troop transport. Think of it. Harry saved hundreds of lives. Hey, where's Uncle Billy? He's at the bank, George. But the bank examiner's here waiting for him. Right. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Carter, bank examiner. Right, right. Hey, did you see in the newspaper? That's my brother's picture. The president's decorating him today. Well, I suppose they do that sort of thing. Now, about the books. George? Uh, hey, Violet. Oh, did you see in the newspaper? Harry's homecoming is... George, can I see you a minute? Privately. Privately? Right. Uh, Just step uh, right Mr. in. Bailey, I'd like to get to your audit tonight so I can get home to Elmira and spend Christmas with the family. Right, right, right. Um, well, I just got to take care of some. I'm Tilly. C can you show the books to Mr... Carter, uh, bank examiner. Right. Can you, Tilly? Sure, George. Right this way. Um, right. Carter. Bank examiner. Thank you, George. So what can I do for you? Well, the, the letter you promised? The letter? Oh, the le <laughs> letter of recommendation, right. I was in the middle of it when all the stuff about Harry came up. Well, it's like I told you on the phone, phone George. I'm leaving for New York. I, I just got to make a fresh start. Well, uh, how's this? <clears throat> to whom it may concern, the bearer, Miss Violet Bick, <clears throat> has been employed here for the past two years. Why, that's a lie, George. Now, now, Violet. She has demonstrated intelligence. A lie. Ability. A lie. And good character. Character. Why, if I had any character. I'm glad to give her my wholehearted endorsement. Gee. Thanks, George. Anytime, you know. Come on now, Violet. It takes a lot of character to leave your hometown and start somewhere new. And here, here's something to help you get started. Oh no, George, I, I couldn't take your money. Come on now. You're poor, aren't you? You don't want to have to hawk them furs in that hat, do you? Walk to New York. It's just a loan, Violet. I'm in the loan business. And besides, you'll get a job anyways. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Now, uh, good luck to you, Violet. Thank you, George. I'm glad to know you, George Bailey. Merry Christmas, Georgie. And the same to you. Uh, say hello to New York for me. I will. Guys, where's Uncle Billy? At the bank. <sighs> Mr. Potter, <laughs> here to personally guard your money. <laughs> Is your bolt not strong enough? Look out, Bailey, you old fool. My wheelchair. Oh, did you read the news? Harry Bailey gets the Medal of Honor. What will those Bailey boys do next? Huh? Let me see that newspaper. Right there. What does that slacker George think about Harry being decorated? Well, if that slacker George went to the war, he would have earned 
two Medal of Honors. No, but he didn't go, bad ear. He heard everything about the call to arms. Well, make sure you report about the parade for Harry tomorrow. Sorry, you old thief. I can't chat no more. I gotta go make a pause at the bank. Next customer, please. Hello. My bank book and deposit slip. And Merry Christmas to you. And you too, Mr. Bailey. But have you forgotten something? Hold on a sec. Do my laundry. Go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Irritate Potter all day. <laughs> well, I forget things all the time. So, Mr. Bailey, where's the money? What do you mean? Well, you want to make a deposit, don't you? Well, of course. I want to deposit $8,000. Well, then it's customary that you bring your money with you. Wheel me out of here. What, it's not in there? Oh, yeah. What, what did I do with the money? The money? What did I do with the money? Uncle Billy couldn't find the envelope with the deposit money in it because it was folded into the newspaper that he just handed to Mr. Potter. It was in the... He gave it to Mr. Potter? That's why there's Karen Street outside the bank. He, you check by the curb, Uncle Billy. I'll look by the mailbox. I just don't know where it could have gone, George. $8,000. It's not our money. It's the depositor's money. And the bank examiner's here. Well, we traced every, every step I took. Well, if you didn't drop it, maybe you never put the envelope in your pocket in the first place. Maybe. Maybe. God, I'm just no good here, George. Uncle Billy, you gotta start thinking now. Just think. What do I do with that money? I can't. I, I just can't. Now you listen, you old fool. Do you know what this means? It means bankruptcy, scandal. One of us is going to prison and it's not gonna be me. You keep looking now. I'm going home. No, George, wait. Help me. <laughs> well, what's the matter, George? You haven't said a word since you came home. How can I with Janie over there banging on that piano when well, she played the same song over and over again? What is it, dear? Another hectic day? Yes, yeah, a red letter day for the Baileys. Mom, here's your display. Hey, Dad. The no, Brown no, next door got a brand new car. You should see it. Well, what's wrong with our car? Not good enough for you? Sorry, Dad. Thank you, Petey, for bringing Zuzu's plate. Run along now. Yeah, I'll go get some more decorations. Hi, uh, Zuzu's eating in a room. What's the matter? Oh, she caught a little cold on the way home from school. Didn't button up her coat. She won a flower as a prize. A little cold? What do you mean, a little cold? It's okay, dear. The doctor said it was nothing serious. The doctor came? Zeus just got a little temperature. It's this drafty old house. It's no wonder we don't all have pneumonia. George. I mean, why do we have to live here in the first place, in this crummy little town? What's wrong? Yeah, everything is wrong! I mean, why do we have to have all these kids anyways? Daddy, how do you spell frankincense? I don't know. Ask your mother. Where are you going, George? Going to see Zuzu. Daddy. Hey, Zuzu, I heard you got a cold. I want a flower at school, Daddy. Can you give it a drink of water? A drink of... Right, uh, of course, of course. Now, where, where's some water? Daddy, you crushed it! I didn't mean to, I was fix just... It. Fix it, Daddy, paste it! Right, right. Hey, you go good as new. Thank you, Daddy, you can do anything. Anything? Now you get some rest, all right? You'll feel better in the morning. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Daddy. <laughs> Merry... Zuzu, uh, Zuzu felt a bit hot to me. Maybe we ought to... Hello? Do something. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Welch. Oh, she'll be all right. Who is it, Mary? It's Mrs. Welch, Zuzu's teacher. 
Oh, what? Oh, that's Give me all that right. Phone. George, please. Hello, is this Mrs. Welch? George. Yeah, well, this is Mr. Bailey. You know, my kid could have got a pneumonia because of you. Silly, careless people like you sending my kids home half naked. You know, maybe mine are the best dressed in town, but at least they. Hello? Hello? Janie, just stop with the piano already. Stop! What's come over you? Must you torture the children? Well, how about this? Are you happy now? You worked for months on that model. What's come over you? You're acting like a wild animal. I'm sorry, Mary. George. Janie. Pete, I'm, I'm sorry. I gotta get out of here. So that's what this sudden visit is about, George. You're $8,000 short in your account. Well, yes, Mr. Potter, but you gotta help me. I'll pay any sort of interest. If you want the building, the building alone, I guess we could but work. But you say the money was lost. What if it was stolen? Maybe you should notify the police. No, you see, Mr. Potter, Harry's homecoming is tomorrow, and well, the, pub the publicity would just- I see. You didn't lose the money playing the market, did you, George? Horses? Hey, 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 now that has, that has nothing to- A woman, then. Half the town's talking about you giving money to Violet Bick. What are you trying to do to me? So you've come to me. Why not your buddy, Sam Wainwright? Well, I, I already tried, Sam. But he's in Europe right now. So you want a loan from me? What do you have as collateral, George? I've got some life insurance right here. Life insurance? For how much? It's a $15,000 policy. 15000 But what's your equity in it? 500 $500? And you want an emergency loan on Christmas Eve for 8000 Well, yes. You're pathetic, George Bailey. For years you've opposed my plans and derided my character. You said you didn't need me or my money. And now, I'm suddenly very important to you. Well, do I look like Santa Claus? No, sir. You once called me a warped, frustrated old man. Well, George, what are you but a warped, frustrated young man? You dreamed of conquering the world. Look at you now, crawling to me for help. Go to the riffraff you love so well. Go beg them for help. Mr. Potter, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to swear out a warrant for your arrest. What are you... I'm calling the district attorney, then the sheriff, and then the newspaper. The, sh the sheriff? The newspaper? What about a loan on my insurance policy? For $500 in equity? George, you're worth more dead than you are alive. No. No, I... Where are you going, George? You can't hide in a small town like this. Hello? Sheriff Baxter? This is Henry Potter. I'd like to swear out a warrant against George Bailey.
of that Henry Potter. I know. Clarence, I know. Poor he George. had George's $8,000 sitting in his desk drawer that entire time. How could... What, what, what is George... What can... What, what is George going to do? Well, he's at Martini's Tavern. He's had quite a bit to drink, and he's pretty dazed. Mr. Bailey, you all right? Oh, Father. You don't have it right now. I'm listening to me. Please just show me the way. Hey, Martini. George, you don't look so good. You're right, Nick. Hey, Mr. Bailey, you're drinking too much. No, no. Please. Please. Bailey? Which Bailey are you talking about? This is Mr. Bailey. Mr. George Bailey. George Bailey? Why, you... <laughs> Serves you right, Bailey. If you ever talk to my wife that way again, you'll get it even worse. What? Ain't it enough she slaves away teaching your stupid kids how to read and write? Then you gotta ball her out on the phone. Hey, hey, beat it, Mr. Welch. You punch my best friend? He even by me. Gave me money to buy my own house. Hey, Nick, kick him out. Go on, Welch. Never mind the tab. You, you okay, Mr. Bailey? Uh, yeah, I am, Martin. It was that. Mr. Welch. Uh, uh, she, she teaches, his wife teaches at school. Can't well, he woke me up. I guess that's what I get for praying, huh? Well, where's my policy? Huh? My insurance policy. D don't you worry, Mr. Bailey. Mr. Welch don't come here no more. Uh, let me get you something to go for your face. Look! Blood! <laughs> Just leave me be. No, it, don't, don't go, Mr. Bailey. It's no Let me go. No, Nick, take him home. Well, Clarence, George just left Martini's Tavern a few minutes ago. He is standing on the Bedford Falls toll bridge, and he's getting ready to jump. Do you have your plan ready? I, I don't know, boss. Clarence, if you can save George Bailey's life, You'll get your wings. My wings? My wings. <laughs> I will let you down, boss. I will let you down. George Bailey! Step back to the bridge, George! Don't jump, George! <laughs> George Bailey stands on the Bedford Falls toll bridge. Convinced he's worth more dead than he is alive. Deep in despair, he stares down into the icy water below, poised to end it all. When suddenly... Help! Help! I'm drowning! Help me! Help! Hold on! Hold on! Mr. I'll help you! is open tonight. Otherwise, you would have frozen to death dumping that river like that. Are you getting warm now? Well, I am. And, and you, sir? I'm fine. Although my underwear is a bit out of fashion. I passed away. You, pa you passed what? And Tom's story is drying up, too. The name's George, actually. No, not you, George. I still have my book, Tom Sawyer, with me. But you know, George, there's a Tom Sawyer quality to you. Lots of ideas. One for last, you know? <laughs> right. So, so how'd you fall in anyways? Fallen? I didn't fall in, George. I jumped in. I jumped in to save you. You jumped in to save me. That's right. It worked, didn't it? What? I mean, you didn't go through with your plan, did you? <laughs> what plan? You know, suicide. Hey, you can't commit a suicide around here. I think that's against the law. It is where I come from. <laughs> where do you come from, mister? Oh, uh, you know, heaven. What? Right, right. George, your lip, it's bleeding. 
<clears throat> yeah. As, uh, it was an answer towards my prayers. No, George. I'm the answer to your prayer. I was sent from heaven to help you. Oh, come on already. I'm Clarence Oddbody. AS2. <laughs> AS2? Angel. Second class. <laughs> right. <clears throat> well, I'm going to go see if any... Other angels saved anybody. Okay. Um, when your clothes are dry, please feel free to leave. Okay, thanks so much for the warm stove. Okay. Hey. So why'd you save me? George, because killing yourself is a sin, especially for $8,000. $8,000? How in the heck did you know that? I'm your guardian angel, George Bailey. I know all about you. <laughs> oh. Guardian angel, huh? Just the kind of angel I'd get. <laughs> uh, well, where are your wings then, huh? George, I'm an angel second class. I don't have my wings yet. But you can help me earn them. But me help you. Help me, huh? You couldn't help me out with $8,000, could you? George, we don't use money in heaven. Well, it sure does come in handy down here, bub. <laughs> Some may think so, but... See, I just found out a little too late. I'm worth more dead than I am alive. George, don't talk like that. I'll never get my wings to keep that up. I, I mean, you just don't know what you've done for people. If it hadn't been for you... If it wasn't for me, I, people would be so much better off. My wife and my kids... George, killing yourself would not make them happier. I suppose so. I just, I just wish I, I'd never even been born. What did you say? <laughs> I wish I was never even born. That's a good one, George. Good what? The plan you just gave me. It, it reminds me a little of Tom Sawyer. Oh, let's see. Here we go. You have your wish, George. What in the heck? You were never born. <laughs> never born? That's right. You have no worries. No missing $8,000. No share for Mr. Potter on your truck. You don't exist. Don't exist. Hey, say that in my bad ear. You don't have a bad ear, George. <laughs> the George Bailey you used to be may have had a bad ear, but you're not that George Bailey anymore because you don't exist. <laughs> well, that's crazy. But I can hear. And your lip has stopped bleeding. Hey, what are you... This is all too strange. I need a drink or something. How about you, Angel? You want to join me? A drink? Well, I'm on duty. Well, when our clothes dry, we'll... Our clothes are dry, George. They never got wet, you see? Never born. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, uh, let's get our skippies on and we'll walk on down to Martini's Tavern. I mean, I'll walk. You can fly. Fly. George, I don't have my wings. wings. Right, 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 right. <laughs> well, uh, when we get a couple drinks in us, we'll both be flying, huh? <laughs> oh. Hey, Nick, it's Martini here. I, I got to apologize for earlier. You want Martini or do you still wife, guys? <laughs> just, just give me a double bourbon. Right. Oh, and for you? The name's Clarence. I'll have a um, flaming rum. No, wait. Mold wine. <laughs> mold what? Yep, mold wine. With a dollop of nutmeg <coughs> and just a dash of cloves. <laughs> Up to it, my lively lad. <laughs> Listen, Clarence. We some hard liquor few, uh, here for people that want to get drunk fast. And if that's not good enough for you, I can convince you and otherwise. And Nick, that'll be all right. He'll have the same as me, right? Right. right. Two double bourbons, right? Right. 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 <laughs> What's the matter with Nick? He's, he's acting strange. The tavern's changed. Bedford Falls has changed, George. It's a different world without you. Different world? 
There's a drink somebody just made it. Made what, Clarence? Well, every time a bell rings, an angel just got his wings. <laughs> what, you see an angel? Angel second class. Clarence, 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 Clarence. I wouldn't be mentioning angels. Why? Don't they believe in angels? <laughs> well, yeah, but I'll, so they're not used to actually seeing one. In a bar? Uh, yeah. Sorry, Nick. He just never grew up. Sure, I did. Like, this September I'll be 293. Who pitches that? I bet you don't got any money either, do you? Of course not. We don't use money in heaven. <laughs> That's it. Get out of my bar. Bill. Uh, your bar, Nick? Where's Martini? I told you you wouldn't get no Martini, and how do you know my name anyway? I don't know you from Adam. Hey, you again. Spare some shades, mister. Spare some. I told you never to come back here paddling again. Rummy, hey, throw him out. Mr. Gower. Get out of my bar. Hey, yeah, I'm George. Do you hey, remember me? Hey, 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 no, that's, that's Mr. Gower from the farm. See, I know sure. that man. Yeah, he did 20 years in jail for poisoning a kid. And if you know him, then you must be Gilbert's too. Hey, throw him out, Bill. Throw hey, him out. All right, all right. Get out of my bar. Right, right. Get, Get out. All right. All right. Hey, look, everybody, I'm handing out wings. <laughs> Mr. Gower poisoning him, kid. How can that be? You were never there to stop Mr. Gower from putting poison into those capsules. Not there? Sure I was. No, because you are never born. Never born? No. Well, then who am I? You're no one. You have no identity. What do you mean? I'm George Bailey. No, you're not. You have no driver's license, no 4F card, no insurance policy. You don't exist. Zuzu's pedals. They're not there either, George. You may have had them before, but now you don't exist. Not there. Am I a ghost or something? George. You've been given a gift to see a world without you. No, you're crazy. And you're driving me crazy, too. Now, you leave me alone, all right? I, I'm going home. You stay away from me. George. George. Sign it says welcome to Pottersville. What about it? You are in downtown Pottersville. Pottersville. Well, well, what happened to the building alone? The old Bailey building alone? Oh, that old thing. That thing closed down years ago. As you can see, it's a pawn shop now. Hey, Violet, where are you going? Get your filthy hands off of me, copper. I didn't jack roll nobody. That sailor had it coming. He did, eh? Well, you're coming with me. I said lay off of me. I know the mayor. The judge and the chief, and I'll get you bounced off the force. You can't touch me. That's enough out of you. I'm running you in. No, no, stop! Uh, hey, that's Violet Dick. I know her too. What? what? You, yeah, you and every other wolf in this town. Now you move along, I'll run you no. in too. What's happening? <laughs> hey, hey, taxi, taxi! I'll step on it, Ernie. You gotta get me home. Uh, I'm losing my mind or something. Oh, so, where do you live, Bob? Oh, come on, Ernie. Don't you pull this act on me, too. You know exactly where I live. 320 Sycamore. And step on it. Zuzu sick. All right, now, now you listen to me. Your name's Ernie Bishop. You, you live in Bailey Park with your wife and kids, right? Have you seen my wife? Well, well, of course I have. With you and your house a hundred different times. I built it for you, didn't I? Listen, Bob. My wife took the kid and ran away five years ago. I lent out one of Potter's shacks, and I've never seen you before, so what do you call me, Ernie? All right, Ernie. Right. Just keep driving. Mary Kitty! 
Where are you guys? Now, as you can see, George, this is just an empty house. You don't have a wife or children. What's happened to him? Well, if you don't exist, then your children would That's never... him, officer! He's in there! He's off his rocker! Hold it, you two! Put your hands up! Hey, uh, Bert, it's me, George! What are you... what are you doing? Now, come along quiet-like, and we get you some help. No, it's, it's not me! It's, it's him! He's an angel! He's hypnotized me or something! Yes? Mother? Mother? Who are you? Well, I'm George. You know me. What, what are you trying George, to... George, who? Listen, Mother, something terrible's happened. It's happened to everybody. If you can just let me stay here until I get over it... You know what? There are no babies there. Bam! But we're family. You know me and your brother-in-law, Uncle Billy? You know Billy? Well, of course I know Billy. I, I saw him today at the... Today? Uncle, Uncle Billy, the nut house, what are you trying to... That's what you want to do! Ow, 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 what is happening? One of these tombstones. Martini's buried here, the little Blaine girl. Your father, please. Well... Harry. Harry Bailey, Dad, what is this? He died when he fell through the ice at the age of nine, George. Oh, no, no. Harry went on to win the Medal of Honor. He saved the lives of every man on that transport. Every man on that transport died. How? Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry. Me? Strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many others. You know, George, you really had a wonderful life. Wonderful. The kingdom of heaven is spread upon the earth, but men don't see it. Can't you see what a mistake it'd be to throw your life away, George? Life is the greatest gift. All the things I wanted to do. It's easier to want what you get than to get what you want, George. Yes, George? What about my wife? Mary, where is she? George, you don't have a wife. Just tell me where she is. You wouldn't like it. Where is she? Haven't you had enough? Oh, what's become of her? You tell me! She, she's an old maid. She never married. An old maid? You, you stop playing around. You tell me or I gotta choke it out of you. George! She's at the library. She's just closing up for the night. But George, she won't recognize... George! George, you're back! There's got to be an easy way to get my wings. Mary? I'm sorry, sir. The library's closed. Mary? Excuse me, sir. Uh, Mary! I don't know you. I got you. I want you, Mary. Come on, uh, Let me you go! Me. I'm your husband, George! I, no! Where are you the kids, Mary? Me. Where are our kids? Help! Help me! Mary, you let me where are the kids, man? Don't run away! No, just let go of me! Clarence, where are you? Clarence, are you there? I'm here, George. You're not thinking of jumping off that bridge again, are you, George? No. No. I want to be put back in the world again. I want to be something. Be certain, George. If you go back, you ought to face scandal and prison. Mr. Potter, the sheriff, disgrace. Anything, Clarence. Gladly I'll do it. Just give me back to my wife and kids. I want to live again. That's the spirit, George. Always be willing, never despair. Well, you can do it for me, right? You can do it for me. Oh, I'll live again. Oh, I just want to live again. That's all. I just want to live again. I just want to live again. Please, just live again. 
identify your good ears. I said, where have you been? <laughs> Bert, I'm alive again. I'm alive. Alive? Hey, you know, your lip is bleeding. I like it. It is. I'm just looking at the blood oozing out of there. Isn't this amazing? <laughs> well, well, it's not that bad, George. <laughs> and, and Zuzu's petals. And they're right here on my... They're here all... Oh, oh, Merry Christmas, Bert. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, George. Now, let me take you home right after I, uh... Now, I, I can't wait, uh, Bert. I, I'm going home. I know the way home. Boy, do I know the way home. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Bedford Falls. Old building and loan Uncle Billy, Mr. Potter. Everyone, Merry Christmas. This is amazing. <laughs> Merry kids! What? Hey, what's with all the... Sheriff! Merry Christmas, Sheriff, and, and you. Mr. Bailey, your punch shows slightly. Yes, $8,000, I know, right? Precisely, but you're just Excuse me, Mr. Bailey, uh, I've got a warrant here. You misplaced it, but I'm afraid you're under arrest. A warrant, right, Sheriff Jell. Oh, this is wonderful. No, it's not. Now, just wait a minute. Mary, kids, where are you? Oh, look at this wonderful, drafty old house. Mary, kids! Oh, you know, I love you so much. I missed you. Where's your mother? Oh, Zuzu, my little ginger snap. How are you feeling? Fine, Daddy. No smidge of temperature. A oh, smidge. Hallelujah. George? Mary? George! Mary! George! Oh. <laughs> Mary. George, where did you go? I gotta touch you, hold you, Mary. You're real. You're real. You have no idea what's happened. You have no idea what's happened. Come in. Everybody. George, look what I've got. Look at Billy. George, the bushes of money. You found the $8,000? No, it was all Mary's idea. She worked America, didn't you, Mary? People heard you were in trouble, dear. Your friends, they pitched in to help you. Oh, thank you all so much. Martini, Mr. Gower, Grimaldi, Ernie. Well, George, if it weren't for you, none of us would have a roof over our heads. Here, Georgie, alone. What? You didn't go? Nah, I decided to stick around. Oh, wait, everybody, there's a telegram from Sam Wainwright. It reads, Mr. Gower notified me you needed cash. Stop. My office will advance you up to $25,000. Stop. Hee-haw and Merry Christmas, Sam. Wow. Harry! Oh! It's good to see you, mother. Oh. We flew in as fast as we could, George. Mary called us in Washington. Harry, lead us in a cheer to George. Yes, a cheer to George. The richest man in town. To George! Yay! Daddy, look, see my little bell hanging on the Christmas tree, way up high. I hung... Wait. <laughs> I see it, Juju. I see it. I hung it up there all by myself, Daddy. Can you read it for me, Daddy? <laughs> if I can reach it. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, look, George, there's the book here under the tree. See? Oh, it's the Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And there's an inscription inside. What's it say? Dear George, remember that no man is a failure who has friends. Thanks for the wings. Love, Clarence. Clarence? A very dear friend of mine. Daddy, teachers said every time a bell rings, some angel gets their wings. <laughs> That's right, Zuzu. That's right. Thank you so much, Clarence. It really is a wonderful life. Happy landings. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to
much work put into this, and we thanked all those people Lois said, and... And Sharon. And Sharon, yes. Sharon she put, did so much work, and Sharon was awesome. Year. Just couldn't. I tried a whole bunch of them and they just didn't work. And she said, I oh, like be... the story of a oh, wonderful wow. life. And I said, I don't even think it's a stage play. I got right on Google, wonderful Google, and there it was. And so we were kind of late, and you can see all the work. I want to acknowledge Malcolm. Days of old Lang Syne. 